Okay. Let's see. It looks like. Okay. All right. Let me do an introduction. Greetings, one and all. Give thanks for life and the life giver. King Selassie Ija. Uh, Rastafari. Rastafari. All right. Yes, ones and ones. Here we are again. You know, already know. Five Points International. Corey Harris, your host. This week, we're continuing in our journey, looking at the roots of Naya Bingi drumming. And we are joined by the Honorable Priest Anta Merritt. Blessed love, my Lord. My Lord, blessed love, health and strength to the eye and all loved ones round about you. My Lord, give yeah, thanks. Yes, I. So just um, if you could, just a brief introduction. You can tell the good people a little bit about uh, your journey and um, whatever else you care to share. See. Well, you know, give thanks uh, for... Is this revelation of this trial, the Rastafari, which if I would give it a time frame began in um, uh, 1978. Um, Hearing you. Can, can you hear me? I hear you now. Yes. Okay. Yes. So I was just saying, uh, if I would give it a date, a year date, my trod, uh Consciously knowing the name and chanting the name Rastafari began in 1978. Um, it was um, just a coming together, of meeting ones and ones here in the San Diego, California, Southern California area. Um, and it, it just kind of grew from there. Um, don't want to take up too much time, but it really kind of took off on another level when um, I went, made the the trod to Ethiopia in night in two thousand two, mm -hmm. that was my first time going to the continent to Mother Africa, and uh, it was a breathtaking experience. It really was wonderful to see the people. Uh, went throughout the uh, northern trod of Ethiopia from the capital Addis to Oxum, to Lalibela, uh, and um, got to just, just see that and, and experience that 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 beauty of um, of you know spiritual home. Um, also made a try to Sheshamani, mm -hmm. where as um, many ones and ones may know, this was the land area that uh, His Imperial Majesty Ali Selassie I gave to uh, I and I here in the West uh, through um, the works through the Ethiopian World Federation, the EWF. Mm -hmm. And got to meet the brethren and sisters uh, there and uh, had many long reasonings with uh, the elders. That was, uh, was really nice. Some of the elders have since um, made their celestial trod, such as... Um, Congo Rocky, also known as Bongo Rocky, and mm. uh, Mama Baby I. Uh, they were some of the first elders, elders that greeted me and spent you know some wonderful time with them. Um, a very upful elder, uh, Kesteklea, Boshanti priest. Mm. And, um, it was very, um, very inspiring to meet that uh, that elder. Uh, for whom I wrote a book, short book about. And uh, from there, these things grew into this uh, present trod uh, as the Bobo Shanti um, expression of Rastafari. You know, mm -hmm. this liberty is for me, for this man, uh, the fullest expression that uh, I have had and will continue to, to express. Mm -hmm. So yes, and uh, other than that, you know, then there's been the academic trod, which is its own uh, journey. And I respect the man for uh, making a move in that direction. Because I tell you, my Lord, there are more, more um, man and woman need to be making more and more expressions academically, medically, professionally, mm -hmm. you know, whatever uh, works and words we can do 
to um, help edify, um, especially the youth, and show you know that we have many sides to to ourselves. I know that I, as a musician, mm. I played uh, trap drums for a number of years, mm. and um, it, you know the expressions that we have uh, really needs to be shared to the world. That's all right. That's true. It's true. We got to make our light shine even brighter. You know, now's the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. True, true. Yes, I. Well, with that, you know, let's dive into the topic. Um, As I said, uh, we're talking about Naya Bingi, you know, and we know um, the name coming out of Uganda from the warrior queen. But if you could um, just give the people uh, your understanding of that foundation and then really how it was adopted to become a whole style of drumming. Mm -hmm. um, well, Naya Bingi, sometimes people say with Naya Bingi, um, there's a, a tradition whereby mystical um, queen, mystical chiefess, uh, who fought against uh, the British in the late 1700s, early 1800s. And um, from, our, from her works, uh, other women and men uh, gathered around her and spread this um, consciousness of resistance to colonialism um, and the slave, slave trade that preceded it, mm -hmm. such that um, uh, we view protest against oppression of black people whether it's mental or physical colonialism mm -hmm. as an expression of the naya bingi tradition um there are some various articles uh where people are, are attempting to get an understanding about how that tradition manifested in amongst uh blacks in the west in the in african diaspora I'm not totally sure, but um, clearly the, the brethren and sisters in Jamaica were became aware of uh, the anti-colonial thrust that um, was going on by Africans in the continent um, through the Naya Bingi in East Africa, through uh, other um, uh, fights against the, the slave trade and colonialism. Um, King Jaja uh, of the um, West Africa was not another one. So the, the Naya Bingi tradition where it says, you know, death to uh, white oppressors as it became expanded to death and to death to uh, white and black oppressors is a consciousness of strong revolution uh, that inspired the Maroon traditions um, across not only Jamaica, but other parts of the Caribbean uh, and parts of the Southern uh, United States uh, and uh, various other parts of uh, uh, Central and South America. So Naya Binge is, uh, even some who do Naya Binge may not even know the Naya Binge itself, but they know it in their hearts in terms of being consciously uh, um, in rebellion against uh uh, anything that keeps black people and other conscious people down. Mm. Yeah, true liberation. Mm -hmm. So when I was uh, last on the hill um, over the summertime, I was reasoning with Priest Fliegel and Priest Fliegel was saying that when he was a youth coming up 50s, that the term was was groundation. And he said mm -hmm. right around that time period was when one started to start to use the term Naya Bingi. Mm -hmm. um, so from my reading, you know, um, about the Buru tradition, the term groundation is mentioned as something that was uh, a gathering, a cultural, spiritual, up full gathering with drums and all night and, you know, 
that was something that was already strongly uh, entrenched. So, yes, yes, definitely. Mm. Mm -hmm. Go through. Uh, I didn't mean to cut the eye off, but um, that's the idea of grounding um, uh, and ground nation being literally on the ground, sitting on the ground, standing on the ground. Um, feeling rooted to to Mother Earth, and then the thoughts and reasonings that come out of that grounding with your brothers, as Walter Rodney would say, is uh, a you know it's an it's a sharing of of uh, realities of sightings that one has, whether it be one's visions one's uh, understanding or understanding of what's going on in the world. We share and we grow as someone brings in this perspective and that perspective. Uh, and everyone comes away. It's kind of like an education session. Mm -hmm. It's a reasoning session mm -hmm. where um, ones just go on and on for, for uh, hours and then mm -hmm. get up the next day and reason again, you know, because you're grounding, you eat together, smoke together, pray together, um, meditate together. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is something that has been uh, tried to keep us separated from each other as a people so that we don't ground with each other. Uh, uh, grounding took place uh, amongst the early Maroons where they would separate themselves from um, the uh, slave catchers and the slave holders and live in the hills. That grounding where you eat together, grow your own food, um, become um, as self-sustaining as you can is uh, a, a soul food, a spiritual food. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm also thinking about electromagnetically the significance of grounding, you know, even when we go outside with our bare feet, what's happening there, you mm. know, um, and how that's needed by our structure to to interact with the ground, you know, and to off offload those those uh, those electrons, those energies, you know. Yeah, yeah. You really can't discharge that build up of uh, negativity by constantly walking on concrete. Mm -hmm. you know, the expression concrete jungle is real uh, uh, apropos. Hmm. But once you get out into nature, uh, going to the parks, even in the city, can help. But we'll get out hmm. really into nature, getting out into the mountains, into the hills, uh, yeah. being out by large bodies of water, like uh, lakes and uh, rivers where the water is running. It's not hmm. sitting there in a pond, stagnant. The water hmm. is moving. You know, this is uh, an exchange of energy that is so, as you say, electromagnetic. Mm -hmm. uh, being out in the rain, you know, if, as long as it's not hard rain, but that light rain where, um, as they say, um, the negative ions are out there that uh, are uh, helping to to uh, balance the energies mm -hmm. within the goody, the body. Mm -hmm. as we say. Mm -hmm. All these things uh, uh, are things that people, uh, too many people have forgotten. As we trod, as we trod through the belly of the beast, mm -hmm. being out in nature, grounding, as you say, having your feet on your earth, so mm. that, uh, that uh, those negative vibes get discharged mm. and you pull up into the positive vibes. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's in the West they have all these modes of uh, psychology and everything, but. You know, if we were truly connected and grounded, we wouldn't be needing all of that, you know. Mm -hmm. Freud and the rest of them, at least that's that's my personal conviction. Yeah. yeah. So what can you tell us about the connection with Kumina, Buru, Revival, uh, Pukumina, these these other styles that are you know, when I've when I've heard them, I've not heard them, I have to say, other than Bingi, but I haven't heard like Kumina or or Pukumina 
on the island in person. I have yet to do that. That's one of my my uh, future in the near future goals. But what can you tell us about the connection with these styles that came before? Mm-hmm. Who they came before um, mm-hmm. Naibingi or came before Rastafari? Before Naibingi. Uh, yeah. Well, so much of um, the island of Jamaica and the other islands, as the saying is, uh, as they say about Jamaica, they're, 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 there are more churches in Jamaica than anywhere else in the world. Um, every time I go to the island, I will go out, even if I, you know, if, if I ground myself at the camp, I still go out and just travel the island mm-hmm. and uh, walk around and listen, uh, listen to what I hear in the Blue Mountains or what I hear in the hills. And you hear, you know, some of the revival meetings, some of the uh, uh, Pocomina gatherings. It is a, it's an energy that um, uh, that I have no problem with. Mm. Um, because I, I tell you this, I grew up uh, going to a Baptist church, mm. but um, after, because my mom was working, she would tell us, okay, when when uh, church service at the Baptist church is done, I want you to go to your Auntie Sudi's house, uh, Sudi's church, which was a Pentecostal holiness. And... Um, it was uh, not that far away. My little sister and I walked to this church. We weren't allowed to uh, go up into the tabernacle area. All the children had to be down at the bottom. But of course, you know what that means. You tell children to stay in one place and they're going to go up where they're not supposed to go. So, of course, we snuck up the back way and we were listening to this. We would hear in a, in a, in a, in the basement, we would hear this. I don't know if you can hear this. I didn't know what it was from this perspective that we're talking about, but it was Buddha. Mm. It was Buddha, 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 Buddha. And you would hear this, uh, not because it was drummed, it was played, you know, it was, it was played, you know, they have the... Mm-hmm. Okay? Or they would have tambourines. And it was... Uh, it was an undercurrent beat that uh, comes out. So my point, I guess, is that this is an Af- what they call an African retention that kept the people together. Mm. It, it, so, yes, I know some people will have an issue with Zion, um, Revival, or mm. Pocopina. Um, mm. I don't argue that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would just say that this is what kept the people together. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, my folks coming from uh, family side, mother side from Georgia, and mm-hmm. father side from South Carolina. Mm-hmm. Uh, this sound was not foreign to me. It was just like, oh wow, yeah, yeah, I hear this. This is the culture of African people who brought their culture with them from Africa, and it was transplanted here in rich soil okay because these 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 spiritual expressions flourished uh, outside of the purview of slaveholders mm-hmm. to them it was entertainment they would allow people to do it and then further and further people got further and further from the the sight of slaveholders and of white people and they they did this go so, so there are things you know i, I don't know um some people may be uncomfortable with some aspects of uh, Pocomina mm-hmm. uh, or uh, this, but uh, the the regard for the ancestors, for instance, in various mm. uh, um, religious expressions that are found in Jamaica and other parts of the islands is uh, indicative of that part of the culture that, um, that uh, was taken from us, mm. or they tried to take from us, I should say but it survived um, and it has evolved over time. So uh, I, I think that these, um, it, these, these religious expressions 
are a a refuge for the people. Um, and it's unfortunate that the, the system has exploited it to the way it, that it does. But uh, it, it's, we could, you know, talk about the pros and cons of it. Uh, but I don't think that's the, the point here that should be made at this point. It's just, it's just to see, you know, this is the culture of the people. Mm -hmm. And let it be, let the people, because that's for, for many of the elders in particular, that's all that they had. Mm -hmm. You know, that day, you know, some of these nine night celebrations, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, seven nights or however many nights it would be, mm. that was spiritually uplifting for them. That's mm -hmm. not my particular thing. Okay? Mm -hmm. But when I've I've heard it, you know, from a distance where we go up to it to a certain proximity, you know, you would uh, feel this, um, you know, this energy of the people where they they are being themselves. Mm -hmm. yeah. that, you know, when I was uh, reasoning recently with Honorable Priest Tassetti, he brought out the information that Honorable King Emmanuel was at one time in his youth an adherent of Pukumina. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he was also saying... Um, that around the time of his majesty, even those who weren't identifying, self-identifying as Rastafari per se, that is those who were following more so the revival, the Zion um, path, were still hailing and praising his majesty and recognizing this as a monumental occasion. And he said they were, had, images of his majesty even in their churches so it was not something that was just restricted to a small segment of black people but even those you know who were just in love with africa and the Af their african self you know mm -hmm. um but i thought that was very interesting um and that's that's good to hear that because a lot of people sometimes uh see see this African spirituality in little compartments, mm. you know, and it's not, it cannot be, you know, people are, if people are on one island or a series of islands, you can't compartmentalize that. Mm. And something as monumental mm. as what happened in 1930, okay, whatever one's religious or spiritual expression, it cut across barriers. Hmm. You know, it cut across. It showed, you know, the the barriers were really artificially, um, are artificial, because like you say, you know, people say, "Wow, I never heard of this." Wagwan, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. what is this? It was a it was a monumental thing, and when regents like 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 Count Asi comes along, who is, um. It's absorbed by it and inculcated the, the Buddha rhythm, okay? And things begin to shift with, um, you know, like when you look at the, the Buddha rhythm, the Buddha rhythm is da-da, 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 da-da. And mm. if you take those, those, those beats in a, in, a, in a block of note time and you take one of them out, it becomes da-da. Da -da, da -da, mm -hmm. da -da. You put another one in, it's da -da, da -da, da -da, da -da, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, whoa, you know, the, the, as the people became more meditative, so let me meditate upon this, <laughs> this revelation, this mystic revelation that came along. Mm -hmm. I love the name of uh, Khan Asi's uh, group, you know, the, the Mystic Revelations of Rastafari, where they are, uh, and you listen to some of his early recordings, um, where the uh, the Nyabingi beat, you can hear the, the Buddha in the Nyabingi beat with with seeing mm -hmm. that that the second dada dropped and the the the, the slower pace. You go, mm -hmm. That's the roots. That's the roots. That's that from the the Ashanti and the Fanta and the Kurmanti, mm -hmm. uh, okay. and then uh, from other peoples in the island, the, 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 the mm -hmm. Congo. So like, oh. hmm, the Yoruba, the Bakongo, mm -hmm. the Mandingo, 
Ethan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's so it's so rich, you know, and it's um like you say, it's the culture of the people, and you know, through we love ourselves, we going to really know ourselves and know our history and know, like you say, it's an evolutionary liberty, you know. So yeah, this is um this is a real fruitful, real productive conversation. Again, give thanks. So now you mentioned Count Ossie. Um, what can you tell us about Count Ossie now from what I have been, I've been a fan of the music, but it's only really recently in the past several months that I've actually been reading and looking for printed information about Count Ossie, you know, um, but coming up as a younger Ross and the Trot, I like to listen to um, Tales of Mozambique. That was mm -hmm. a real powerful, powerful um, disc right there. But from my reading now, I'm reading that Count Ossie came out of St. Thomas and that he um, came out of the, the Kumina tradition as well. Mm -hmm. So what can you tell us about anything about that? Um, I'm, I'm, really, I'm probably a little more familiar with the, the Buddha tradition with him mm. than the, the uh, uh, Kumina tradition. Um, although I don't see a lot of, certainly they, they are distinct in their own ways. But getting back to our earlier observation about the, uh, the transplantation of culture, it's like a, um, you you have a sense of the dis, the, the, dis, the distinctness of certain traditions, but the commonality of them as well. Um, yeah, one article I shared with the I um, by uh, Elliot Lieb and uh, Kenneth Bilby. Yeah, Bilby. Bilby. Yeah, very good article. Mm -hmm. Kind of uh, it shows that in cultural intermingling. Uh, that um, was expressed by many many groups and kind of coalesced in the works that was going on at uh, by Leonard Howell, you know, and hit those early gatherings uh, in the the thirties and forties. So that whole period between the thirties and forties was Kumina and Buro's, um meeting, the various other religious traditions that are talking to each other or not talking to each other. As sometimes they do. Okay, but still yeah. listening to each other. True. Uh, saying, you know, this things were happening um in the uh in like in a crock pot of where of stew in a sense where things are getting cooked together and making a really vital ital stew from different mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I need to reason reason myself and do a little more looking myself into the Kamina uh mm -hmm. of connection with the, mm -hmm. the Buddha connection uh, I think is pretty strong you know from his movement as a youth playing um uh, I think he played in marching bands uh and uh, a, a school band uh, he, he grew up in and uh, you know he he grew up his, as a youth he grew up uh, in um in the hills of um uh, the bull bay mm. Okay. And uh, then he moved to, uh, I think we say St. Thomas. He spent some time in St. Thomas. Uh, and I think from there, they moved to um, to Kingston. Yeah, I did read he had a camp in, in Bull Bay that, that ones will go to. It was very influential. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, um, one was in an area called uh, Salt Lane. Mm -hmm. Um uh, that was in um, more of an in, in Kingston area, but so a lot of things were happening as as people were going from the country to the city to the city, mm -hmm. and um, people were less isolated as as we sometimes think that they might be. Oh, this person's country. You could, you know, you go to Yuntry to chill out, feel a little better, but people are still there. There's this migration of people from the country to the city and uh, he, he was part of that as he moved to to uh, West Kingston 
area and um, um, worked with a brother named uh, Brother Job or Job. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I read about him in the article. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's a Buddha man and uh, he learned that traditional and worked with a, another elder called uh, King Pango Wato, Wato King. Wato King. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And uh, these these were all drummers in that tradition of uh, of uh, Buddha and Kumina, and where he was schooled in that, and then gathered, and they were having having these these early ground nations. I, I think these were some years in the fifties, even before the uh, the great ground nation in Kingston, where um, they had that that ground nation. Fifty eight. Yeah. Interesting to know if he was ever in that one, that particular one that took place in 1958. I would imagine that he would be. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm Yeah, I mean, such a big event, I would imagine. But that's, yeah, I mean, I was I was reasoning with uh, one of my uh, advisors, uh, David Scott. He's um, an anthropologist from, I believe he's from Kingston. But um, I studied under him when I was an undergrad and um, we're still in communication. And he was saying that, which was surprising to me that no one has done a full length, in-depth study of Count Ossie, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. of his life. I mean, such a seminal figure, you know, I mean, so yeah, that's that's work that has to be done because there's so many people still walking the earth today who who knew him and, you know, who sure. could testify, yes. yeah. Yes, yes, so, yeah. Yeah, looking forward to to seeing what what we can do in, in regards to that. But he he really seems to be, from my understanding, one of the main connectors uh, between uh, Buddha, the uh, Naibingi beat, Naibingi drumming, even the drums themselves, the, the mm. kete funde, you know, mm. and uh, the bass drum that trinity that was played by by those musicians back then and he uh when you listen to some of his recordings you go wow uh that re manifested itself in in uh men like um uh oh, I'll think of his name in a minute to um um I'll think of his name in a minute but also in in later times, more in the seventies and eighties, had night bingy drumming, but a band and horn. Ross Michael. Ross Michael, yes, 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 mm -hmm. yes, yes, yeah. very much so. Yeah. So that's, uh, uh, I was listening to um, I listened to um, Ross Michael one time, and they uh, they broke it down after about a, an hour. They had played steadily for about an hour. And they played, I think it was a cross between Kumina and Buddha. Mm. The, the tempo picked up and it was it was just just chanting, you yeah. know, off the cuff, ad libbing. And the mm. crowd was like <laughs> 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 they didn't know I, they didn't know what was going on, but they were loving mm. it because it was uh it was a, a spell in a sense, you know, in a positive sense. But it yeah. was just Pure, pure uh, drumming, and uh, the other musicians were just vamping along. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and it was like a, it was like jazz bingy. <laughs> mm -hmm. in, in that sense, it was very, very mm -hmm. um, improvisational. Yeah, and, uh, I said, yeah, that's like uh, some of the things I heard Count uh, Count Asi do. Some of yeah. these uh, uh, recordings when they just would. You know, let everyone feel the spirit and express mm -hmm. the fear. Express mm -hmm. the fear. I had the good opportunity, the blessing to um, meet Ernest Wrangling um, a couple of occasions. Um, one time we even played together on stage. And um, being around him, you know, I didn't really get the chance. This is years ago. But uh, just being around him, you can really feel that um, that that energy, you know, from that generation of of pioneers, like you said, jazz bingy. You know, mm -hmm. I'm thinking of a record he put out with um, 
Monty Alexander on Island called Below the Baseline. Mm. Um, and it's just, wow. I don't know if you've heard that record, but What's beautiful record. Below the Baseline? Below the Baseline. Ernest Wranglin, Monty Alexander, you know, and they just do, um, they do a lot of real deep roots, but in a jazz style, you know, real stripped down. Yeah, I think you'd love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, instrumental, you know. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. um, Sly and Robbie years ago did a, uh, a dub album, an LP. And it was called um, I'll have to get the name for you for you, mm -hmm. but the rhythms that they played on there, well, you know how how uh, Robbie and Slice uh, Sly Dunbar does things on the trap drums that are um, you can tell that he's listened to the culture mm -hmm. uh, on a lot of levels. And uh, he he gets outside of the box in terms of what he does, and then he gets that support, you know, uh, got that support, you know, by our, our now elder, uh, I mean, our now ancestor. Uh, but these are things, you know, that goes to show you that the connection between uh, these African forms that were transplanted way before electricity and sound systems came into being. Uh, still exists in the uh, that early Rutico reggae. It's not mm -hmm. played much so much. Now. Everybody's gotten caught up in the electronic dance hall business. Unfortunately, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But um, the, uh, oh, it's called, uh, the name of the album is called Junkanoo Dub. Ah, okay. Yeah, and I remember that too, because that, the, the whole Junkanoo tradition Mm -hmm. is uh, uh, something I'm going to be researching in the U.S. Um, okay, I will. Yeah, keep me in mind. I want to see what you find because uh, that's something that fascinates me. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, when I was um, with my uh, empress in, uh, she was doing workshops in, uh, in the Bahamas. And uh, we were staying at a hotel, and they, they had a, a group that came around and that did the commercial Junkanoo. And we were joining it, you know, and everything. And um, because uh, my wife is a, a dancer, she did traditional African dance, she got up and danced with them. And they loved it. And they, they invited us. They said, you know, you should come in here to come in here the real thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not this. Yeah, the the deep yeah, stuff. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So there was a, a, another transplantation, you know, in the Junkanoo tradition, where you've got the the masked um, um, the masked man representing the ancestors. Uh, the the playing there is designed to um, to move people. Okay, real Junkanoo, you know, not the commercial stuff. Uh, and uh, that is uh, that's a tradition I understand. I haven't seen it in in Jamaica, but I understand that it's you know if you there are certain times of the year like Christmas time, <clears throat> uh, you'll get to uh, see that and also see the marriage of these various traditions, these drumming traditions uh, in uh, in the Junkanoo uh, uh, practice of Junkanoo. Mm. True. Mm. Sorry. Well, the music is so is so rich. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm so glad that the eye is doing this, uh, mm. and I, I think so much more is going to come out of it um, mm. beyond the, the compartmentalized stuff that's that's been there before. Mm -hmm. As valuable as it is, as needed as it is, the foundation had to be made. I was uh, uh, talking briefly one time to Elliot Lieb, who was, you know, who was the author of one of the articles, and, um, and he was just talking. He said, "We just, me and Kenneth, we just went and recorded, went and recorded, you know, just sat there and recorded." And uh, things were very different then. Um, people uh, appreciated uh, 
the fact that we were interested in what they did. Mm-hmm. And uh, even though there was some controversy about the whole, uh, um, uh, I won't even get into that, but still they did, they just did some good work. Mm-hmm. And, uh, much of their recordings are out. Um, I wouldn't say a lot of them, but if you um, uh, do some searching around and uh, want to get some other recordings, they have yeah. some recording of um, uh, of uh, Kumina, Bora. Um, they may have even done some recording in one of the uh, the Maroon camps. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh, I'd have to see... Um, Look at their their leaner notes. I've got an old LP that I haven't played in a long while, and uh, it got me inspired to go and look at that now. Okay, uh, good. These gems that I that I haven't uh, uh, explored, looked looked into it for a while. Mm. Okay. True. Mm-hmm. Well, I want to thank the eye for your time. If there's anything else you you want to add for the people. Oh, just, you know, it, you know, I would just say that uh, there is, a, a an, to me, an unbroken continuity of the African roots of what we do here in the West. It's, it's taken different forms, different expressions due to the, the moving around and the intermixing of people from various parts of Africa various parts of the diaspora but uh i don't think there's a a type of um, music played by black people that does not have african roots in it Um, even some of the instruments that are played Mm. you know so much of the instrument playing is percussive um just to get off on a, a, a tangent, I was uh, listening to a youth on TV and he was talking about why uh, a lot of uh, guitarists, uh, he, he had made up this little title to gather people's attention, but he said, there's this reason why, and this is a young brother, you know, a young black man, said, a lot of reasons why people don't like Jimi Hendrix. But when you listen to him, he was saying, there were so many things that he was doing that other people were just focusing on playing real fast or playing mm-hmm. very melodic or playing mm-hmm. this. He did all of these things, but he was always very percussive. Okay? Mm-hmm. There was there was a percussive thing in there he was listening to that he um, he played blues and he um, had listened to uh, things as a youth. So there are, um, uh, getting back to your question, my love, mm-hmm. we, we have a rich tradition here musically. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that I think one of its richest uh, expressions is in Jamaica, um, but it also is expressed in other parts of the African diaspora. Okay. True. It's very rich. Mm-hmm. Uh, from, uh, from the blues to the jazz to um, uh, all of these things that uh, I go back and reminded me of listening to um, the uh, the church gatherings that I listened to as a youth and heard that mm-hmm. percussive sound, you know, where people mm-hmm. were working their feet and clapping their hands and playing the tambourines and um, uh, brought on that uh, that spirit. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you can't you can't separate the, the secular the sacred from the sec uh, from the uh, from the the sacred from the secular. Mm-hmm. It's just a, a something that happens on different days. Mm-hmm. <laughs> true that yeah they complement each other true my lord mm-hmm. yeah. well give thanks king for the moments for the for the information you know and um looking forward to you know con- continuing the reasoning and of course i'm always here if there's anything i can do mm-hmm. to uh, assist the eye in any way i want to um remind all the people looking in we did have a few technical difficulties, but uh, hopefully we're still we're still coming through loud and clear. But for those who um, are still with us on the video, thank you for watching. And please remember to like, share, and subscribe. And this has been another episode of Five Points International. Um, again, with 
our honorable guest, the honorable priest Anton Merritt. Give thanks, my lord. I thanks. Give thanks, my lord. Give thanks. Yes, Give sir. thanks to all the listeners out there. You know, we hope that this has been edification for the eyes. Mm -hmm. Truly. Well, Keep until up such work, time. Keep up the works. Yes, I give thanks. I truly will. I will. Bless your love. Bless your love, my love. My Lord.